welcome back. Two schools, the Asoro Grammar School and the Annunciation Catholic College Irua, are the latest beneficiaries of the Edo State Government's ongoing renovation programs. Speaking at the commissioning ceremony to mark the sixth anniversary of the government of Comrade Adam Zoshomale, Ogboni Raufa Egbeshala said a responsible government will always do everything in its power to give its citizens the best. Cheers to arouse the arrival of the governor of Edo State, Comrade Adams Oshomole, and his Oshun State counterpart, Benny Rauf Arabeshola, to Asoro Grammar School in Benin City, reconstructed by the Edo State government. Before now, this school had been a sorry sight, a feature that characterized about 500 schools across the state. But that appears to be changing, and the students of Asoro Grammar School can't hold back their appreciation for the government's effort. Before in Asoro Grammar School, we have no chairs in the school. I put you, there was no, there was no, uh, there was no room. Whenever you went for us, there was no room for us. So the back of the school is next time you saw many people lost that. At the Annunciation Catholic Church, students and their parents turn up to celebrate what they describe as the dividend of democracy. He has renovated the school, yes, we like that. You know, this, we are not living in a computer age, it's a modern life, yes, we want to live big, the fans are blowing us, you know, living in a good and a well tied uh, classes. Governor Shamale says his decision to invest in education was fired by the desire to give equal opportunity to every Edo indigent. We insisted that public schools should have a common identity, same specification, regardless of their location, so that government will not have to pick and choose which quality of school should be found in any particular location. For Governor Robert Shola, these students now have an opportunity to aspire for a greater tomorrow. The greatest gift you can have from your parents, from every responsible government, is education. What do I say? The visiting governor also commissions the Izwa Zenema Road in Eastern North local government area of the state. He said, besides the basic artwork, Enjoy the 150 mm of cross stones, two days. Then binding cups and wearing cups. In simple language, what is telling you is that this will be last for 50 years. In the meantime, the Edo State government has promised that there is no going back on its plans for massive infrastructural overhaul across the state. And now to our community report. These are not the best of times for traders at the new layout market in Port Harcourt River State as victims of a fire incident at the market count their losses. The River State Government has promised, however, to reach out to the affected traders, but some of them say the government must be sympathetic to their plight and called for serious action. This is new layout ultra modern market located in the heart of the city of Port Harcourt, built and delivered by the River State government less than two years ago. <laughs> Life is normal for the traders here until tragedy strikes. Eighty shops are raised down by fire, properties worth millions are lost, and the victims watch with sad faces as their entire livelihoods seem to fade away with the smoke from the inferno. I suffered, I have to borrow money, I'm going to start business and to sell. But last night as I closed, I locked my shop and went home. As I was reaching house, they were calling me that my shop has burnt down, market is on fire. I came, I could not enter my shed, the place was on fire. I don't know what to do. I lost everything, everything nothing, nothing, nothing. I cannot go there and pick nothing. Governor Amechi visits the scene to address the issues. We will repair the damage. We say we will pay those that your goods we are born. When we pay them, we will give us some money. We will have some time to repair the stuff. 
But this promise from the governor does not seem to satisfy a few of the traders who say they have heard similar tunes in the past. Life has been hell because you can see I'm just starting from scratch as if I had nothing before. It has not been. We only need the government to come to our age. I just want. Yes, he promised, but we are still waiting for it. I'm tired of everything because if I could recall, 2007, I was a victim of fire incidents. Everything got burned and we were forced to write them, let our government help us, but nothing was done. When we went to Lagos Post of Suffolk, we come back here, we paid everything, we do everything. But, and they were assured us of uh, nothing like fire. The Commissioner of Special Duties tells Channels Television that the market was built to decongest the creek road market and make life better for the traders in the community. Well, I will tell you one thing about the new layer market. It's a complete ultra-modern market, fully packaged for any eventualities. Let me also tell you that there is a fire station that is also built within the market. We have, we have a pumping machine to pump water. There is a reserve tank. They will also have a giant generator, energy generator that can power the, the entire market. But to our chagrin, we discover that these material, these facilities were vandalized. It appears, however, that some traders have issues with that arrangement. Most of the stores now are not even allocated. The government, you know, is that most of the people that we are selling there before do not even have store now. Those that have, uh, you know, they divide it to their political friends and, you know, it's not easy to have, for a trader, a common trader to raise up one million or 500,000 to pay for a store, it's, you know, it's expensive. An average trader in this market lives from hand to mouth as the earnings from each day puts food on the table. This certainly is not the best of times for them. For the victims of this inferno, this is a tragedy that I hope will pass away quickly like a bad dream. But for some, it may remain a nightmare for a long time to come. Emmanuel Iri, Channels Television News. The former United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Dr. Robin Sanders, has launched a book titled The Legendary Uli Woman of Nigeria. The piece of literature presented in Lagos is geared at enlightening people on how signs and symbols connect with human communication and interaction. Our correspondent, Arolua Shonibare, reports. Signs and symbols share similarity in meaning as both connect the mind to appreciating culture and heritage. And one remarkable woman is filled with the need to learn more about what makes signs and symbols important, especially to human communication and interaction. This quest took Dr. Robin Sandals, a former United States ambassador to Nigeria, to learn about the Uli designs, a distinct array of colors and signs made popular by the women in the eastern part of the country. The ambassador has put these findings in a book titled Legendary Uli Women of Nigeria, which is sharing with the world. And the Civic Center in Victoria, Island, Lagos, venue of the book presentation, is receiving a host of eminent minds who share an appreciation of art and its relevance to culture and heritage. The chairman of the occasion, Mr. Alex Oti, is impressed with Dr. Sanders' diversity and passion for Nigeria, a place she has grown to know as home. I'm not aware that there's any part of this country that she didn't get to. And um, a lot of us who come from here have not done 25% of the trips that she did to some far-flown places. And uh, I think I really salute her for that. Next, the honor speakers, Mr. Akin Beno Osage and Ms. Evelyn Oputu, extol the writers on flinching drive for success. There are a few books that, that one comes across. The book is written by a foreigner. But when you look at the book and you read the book, the person has so gotten under, under the skin of us Nigerians that you can't quite believe it was written by a foreigner. She came into Nigeria and 
she became a Nigerian. I, 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 I would say she, she acquired the spirit of what it is to be a Nigerian because she had empathy, she had compassion, she knew what it was to be a woman, she knew what it was to be almost a Nigerian woman and the kind of pain, hard work and suffering. She understood all of it at a level that we didn't have to speak. The highlight of the evening is the interactive session where the chairman of Channel Television, Mr. John Mama, takes the writer on about the influence of technology and security issues in Nigeria as it affects the topic of the day. Let's start by asking you in this age of digital, what's the racket about who you want? Why did you go into that? Why did you research into that? Well, I think fundamentally for me, it's the element of culture that I think is the basis for everything. And if you don't have an appreciation for culture, you don't make an effort to understand culture, then you, you miss so much in life and you miss an opportunity to really be brothers and sisters to people around you. There has to be that appreciation. And so even in the digital age, I think that the basis and the fundamental really essence of people is their culture. And I think some of the challenges that we hear in the world and we see in the world today is that there is not that appreciation and respect for someone else's culture. How to tackle Boko Haram. And so, what has happened is that we're looking elsewhere, uh, going to these reports. How do you think we can achieve, and I, I, I don't want to, I don't think it's, it, it'll be fair for us to trade blames here. But what, what's more important is for us to see how we can achieve that right, much right, more. Unfortunately, right now, for some reason, two great friends are not communicating as well. And they have to figure that out because the risk of not figuring out that out is too high. Uh, it's too high for everybody. It's too high for the friendship, and it's certainly too high for those people on the front lines of the conflict. The guests do not just leave with the author's signature, but most importantly, with a deeper appreciation of holding on to what makes a nation truly great. Identity. Oralu Ashenibara, Channel Television News. Femme Fatale is a group exhibition by eight female artists at the Ford Foundation in Lagos. Now, the artists use their works of art to address some societal issues that affect women. On Art Review tonight, we look at Femme Fatale. Femme Fatale, that's the title of the fourth edition of a female art exhibition in Lagos, featuring original works produced by eight artists. As expected, the theme has women on it. They also work with an array of media. Tina Debowali uses mixed media in these paintings titled Naked Truths. They explore the politics and sexuality of the female gender through issues such as rape and other forms of abuse she experiences daily and how the society is not taking a firm stand to protect a girl child. Then there are pictures from Genevieve Akan, a documentary photographer who looks at the masked woman. I tell someone I'm a photographer, they look at me like, hmm? Like, really? You know why? I'm more than what you see. If you give me that opportunity or that chance. Just as the title suggests, there are several pictures showing a lady wearing a mask by the dining table or in the parlor. There's also a lovely black dress and a pair of shoes, indicating the woman's ability to multitask. Yet in the heat of it all, she remains calm and submissive. And this picture was also put into a performance, showing a single woman who is lonely and trying to cope with the stigmatization that comes with this status in the African society. There are so many things on Karima Shaju's mind, as depicted in this HD digital film, in which a chance meeting with a stranger turns into a heart-to-heart -heart talk about issues that affect women. Other artists like Elysia Bonarushi are also inspired by movies. It shows in her concept called Fear Kuta, 
a weaving method which originated from the need to use yarn as an alternative tool for painting. The constant is the yarn. I always work with threads, wool, fabric as an alternative tool for painting. And basically I'm more, basically focused on geometry. That's my main subject. So it's color and geometry. So I started painting with yarn. I started doing sculpture with yarn. And then I started inserting light. So developing actually installation with lamps. And there are so many interesting interpretations seen through the eyes of four other minds who are hoping to change the fortunes of women for the better or at least call attention to some of these issues with their works of art. Still ahead on the news at 10, Typhoon Hagupit sweeps across the Philippines. Please stay with us.